started this with football certificates. It's culminated at the end of the year with the Lawrence County Player of the Year and the Coach of the Year. The Touchdown Club, I speak for Gene, I speak for Coach Nichols. We do everything we can because really the Coach Inglehart knows Blue Hose and Red Devils and the Crusaders and the Saints and the Raiders. That's what it's all about. We come together. I mean, it's a medium. It is truly a medium that unites the academy, Gold Charter School, Clinton and Lawrence, Presbyterian College. And these are dying out, but we work so hard, the board, uh, both the city of Lawrence, the city of Clinton, and we just thank the coaches for their support. I know the kids look forward to getting players a week individually because everybody's a player a week if they're even here this week. So let's give our board one big hand because they do really work so, so hard. That is Gene Simmons right beside me up here. He really does it all. Uh, Mr. Chris Vinson, Representative Doug Gillum, Ms. Suzanne Lowry, Wendy Medlock, Coach Harold Nichols, Ms. Sharon O'Brien, Marlene Owens, David Pitts, Casey Thornton, and Scott Thomas. They work hard to bring this together. So without further ado, we got two young men that are our players of the week. I'm going to turn it over to you. Our buddy, as his buddy mentioned, it's been a couple of weeks, two Friday nights, since we've had our last touchdown club meetings. We've had a couple of obviously of games each Friday night from high school, a couple of players of the week. First one from a couple of Fridays ago, August 25th, our player of the week is Brent Young from Clinton High School. Brent Young, did come forward. I want to remind everyone, I think I told you, this is presented by Farm Bureau Insurance, our, our player of the week and our new game ball. Let me tell you what Brent did in our robbery game against Lawrence. Brent Young had seven titles versus Lawrence, three titles for loss, one quarterback hurry, one quarterback sack, and interception in that game as well. It was, it was a quote from Coach Brown that says, Brent comes to practice every day with a business-like mindset and a great effort. He was all over the field on defense versus Lawrence. He is a pleasure to coach. Our prayer of the week for August 25th, Clinton High School's Brett Young. All right, for last Friday night, September 1st, this gentleman had an outstanding game and the first victory for Coach Dolly Doolittle is congratulating him. His first career victory at the Lawrence Academy, Coach. Let's go out and play. Seems like it's so far, far uh, away. 
this week we've been practicing early mornings. Everybody been getting up, uh, being in practice at 5 40 in the morning because of the heat. Uh, our guys have, have bought into that and understand what it takes. And, and everybody's there early, not missing too many. Some of them are late, but uh, they're reminded not to be late the next time. Because um, they have consequences. But uh, I love this team. I uh, appreciate y'all for doing this. This team, there, there's not really any like super, super duper stars like that anybody in the whole, but what they do is that they play together. And um, they're, they're unselfish and they get it done. And uh, each and every week they get it done in practice first. Because you win games Monday through Thursday, you just don't show up on Friday and win. Uh, the guys that I brought today, uh, they not only are good uh, football players, but in the community, in our school building, they do things the right way. Um, I'm going to introduce each of them and, and talk about one at a time. The first one is Tashawn Richardson. If you would stand up, Tashawn. Just done an awesome job for us. He's led us over the summer. His work ethic has been great. Um, always had a calm, cool demand, uh, demeanor, and, and, it, and it exudes in everybody else on the team. The last three games, he's led our offense like he did uh, in basketball at the point guard. The last two games, he's extended plays with his feet, executed through the air with his passes. Um, he's completed 13 for 22 passes for 166 yards, three TDs, and two rushing TDs. And the stat that you don't see is the third and longs where he makes plays with his feet and he gets us out of jams when we get a first down. And uh, he operates the offense the way that we ask him to. And he's just been a, a really great leader. I'm looking forward to, to every game watching him play on Friday nights to Sean Richardson. <laughs> As you mentioned before, um, just a consistent playmaker. Been, been a consistent playmaker since he's been on varsity. Every, every day he comes to practice, he's got a good question. He's been watching film. Uh, just a student of the game, and, and you can see it on Friday nights. Over the past two games, he's had 11 and a half tackles, five tackles for loss, two sacks, three quarterback periods, and two interceptions. Just a vital player on our defense, a great leader, and he leads by example each and every day of practice. I look forward to each and every Friday and seeing him play as well. Brett Young. <laughs> Next we have Caden Crawford, if you would stand up. Uh, Caden kind of took on a new role for us this year. Last year, he was mostly just offense. Um, always blocking people out the gate, uh, pancaking guys, taking them to the sideline, or coach would be complaining to the refs about him. Uh, now he's taking that uh, physicality over to the defensive side of the ball as well. So not only is he on offense, he also plays defense for us uh, and been doing a really good job at outside linebacker for us. Uh, over the past two games, he's had uh, eight touches for 85 yards receiving with one touchdown. On defense, he's had nine and a half tackles two QB hurries and a block punt that was big as well. Um, Katie leads on and off the field. Uh, he leads in the weight room. He makes, makes sure Tashawn gets all his reps in the weight room. And uh, he makes sure everybody else gets all the reps in the weight room as well. Just a very hard worker uh, each and every day. Both these guys come on Sunday to watch film, watch the pass game, and they, and they uh, go ahead and get the plan for the next week. All of them like to prepare. They like to be prepared for the game. I look forward to the rest of this year, and uh, hopefully we can get him on one of those all-star teams this year, either the North, South, and Shrine Bowl. Next up, we got Chris Boyd. Chris Boyd's a sophomore. Uh, before, he was uh, basically a backup role player. He knew what his role was, though he came, came to practice every day. He would fill in at week safety, some receiver. Um, Jay Robinson went down in our last in, uh, Lawrence game, and so, uh, Chris had to step in, and, and being a sophomore, he's a little young. You know, some people were worried about, you know, if he could step up. But the last game, he did step up in the great game. Chris had nine tackles at lead safety, one tackle for a loss, one interception for a touchdown. Uh, he also plays special teams. He's very quiet, and uh, he leads by example. Um, looking forward to seeing him and what he does in the future as well. Chris Boyd. We told him he had to have a speech ready because it's his first time here, but uh, you don't have to speak to this. This upcoming game, uh, first and foremost, I want to thank, want to thank our uh, Miss Addison, Catherine Addison. She, she got together a pet rally for us and had all the staff and the community that worked together on the parade that we had yesterday and, and the community pet rally. We appreciate that. 
that and, and uh, everything that went on with, with that um, for our kids and our seniors being able to ride to the parade with their sponsors and walk across the field and get recognized. That was a special time yesterday. Uh, looking forward to this game uh, versus Aiden tomorrow. Make sure everybody packs well on the stadium. It's a fun place to play. I've said it's one of the best places I've ever been uh, to play high school football. And when it's rowdy and loud and everybody's into it, it's electric. It's electric for our kids, our coaches, and uh, just an awesome place to come play football. We appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Up next, we will have the Lawrence Raiders. Um, tell you what, Coach Daryl Smith, what he does, you know, anybody that's ever been to this touchdown club, you know that I'm a huge fan of Coach Darrell. Um, old saying I've heard and I've watched him, uh, tough times don't last, but tough people do. And that's what this man's going to do to persevere with the Raiders. I know great things are coming. Coach Darrell, the floor is yours. Uh, got some players with us today. Uh, you know, it's obviously been a tough few weeks, last three weeks, but the good thing about football is each week presents a new challenge and uh, this week presents a different challenge and the last weeks don't matter. So moving forward through this uh, the rest of this next season, uh, we're just trying to get better, trying to improve each and every day so that we can move forward. And, uh, and last year against Chapman, we had a little bit closer game. Obviously had a couple of injuries hurt us and uh, lost a close from there. So we're looking this week to try to improve uh, from that performance last year. Uh, they're, they're a very good team. They beat uh, Burns. Uh, we lost four Springs last week, but it's going to be a tough challenge for us again. A different type of challenge. We faced three pretty physical running teams the first three weeks, and now it's going to be more of an air attack, uh, four wide, four five wide. Uh, but these guys have been preparing all week, doing a great job, and uh, today kind of highlighted the two weeks really for our guys has come here, and, and it's, it's great for me too because I love to come here and talk about these guys because they're doing just such a great job and they're sitting this uh, first one is Nick Fowler, the senior force. And Nick, the first thing that comes to my mind when I think of Nick is just a team guy. He's a guy that started off last season as a receiver, had to come in and play quarterback because his team beat him. He didn't hesitate, didn't, didn't moan, didn't complain. He just stepped up, did it, wound up in uh, for the uh, last six games for us there and uh, did a great job. Uh, Nick now has come in as quarterback again. I don't think that was his favorite thing, but. This season, we had a transfer come in, he's able to go back to receive when he knew what he loves. He's done a great job there over the last two weeks. He's play inside or outside because obviously he knows all the routes are the quarterback. He's a versatile player, very talented, and he's going to help us out tremendously down this last stretch. Get foul. Lee Tad. Lee is a guy that uh, just loves football. He came into this season, he thought he was going to be in a backup role. He was battling for it, and uh, through injuries, he's become a start linebacker for us. And what I have seen him do is focus hard, become better, and actually uh, work into where he it is a start. I mean, it's not a backup play in that position. He is a start. He's really gotten a lot better the last couple of weeks. Um, he's had to step into that role, and that's just been great to see. And uh, we'll have to be things like that can be tapped. Young young man, Daniel Baker, is uh, playing guard for us this year and, uh, and had a knee injury last year, had, had an ACL tear. And to come back from that, I know maybe some of you have done that, you have to have a tremendous work ethic. You have to really apply yourself, or it's not going to come back the same as you were before. Uh, Daniel came back, he, he did all his work in the weight room, he got ready, he was kind of 50-50 in the spring practice, but he kept working through the summer, and you can tell he's 100%, he's playing just as hard, as good as he was last year, and doing an outstanding job for us in the office tonight, Daniel. <laughs> Myas Young, another young man is just, um, just, just it's in your heart. I mean, you just got to love the ball like this. He started playing football last year for the first time. He was a junior. Uh, a lot of juniors don't like to play JV. We talk to him and say, just play down. That we get to play games, we get to practice. And, uh, and he moved into that role. And 
He did that last year as a junior. He did the outstanding on the JV team. And then this year coming in, he's battling for a start goal at the beginning. Uh, didn't start week one, but did start week two and three. He's made some uh, good plays and is fast becoming one of our best receivers. And that is the type of progress you will see from a football player. And just extremely proud of my ass. My ass. Playing cornerback for us. Come on, let him see. He's got a right here. Really fast. Okay. Uh, he can play anywhere in the defensive backfield. He can play safety. He can play corner. He, he's a physical tackler. He has outstanding speed. He's uh, also track. Uh, four by one is a 100 meter guy. He can fly. And uh, has a great future ahead of him. He's a junior, so we got him back for another year. And uh, just excited to see where he can go. He's one of these guys that just uh, will get better and better as time goes on because he's very coachable. And uh, just, uh, just has a tremendous work ethic. I expect him to wait for him here. All right, bye, soon. Being very proud of these guys, they're doing a good job. Uh, the great thing about it is the attitude, the, the work ethic is there. They are, are still you know, moving forward. And uh, you know, we talked about it again that last week, in fact, this week. And they, they haven't let that happen so far, so I'm just excited to see what they're going to do Friday night. Thank you. Next up, we will have the Thornwell Saints and the Saints of Lake Calhoun Falls Charter. I know they have uh, Norman Dover here, the Triple Dr. Bridges with them. Uh, we cannot wait in Clinton for that victory bell. Listen, everybody in Clinton knows what that victory bell means. This will be ringing soon. Please welcome Coach Charlie Washington. Never played down football in a day in his life. 
Now you pick up football. Um, and he's our center. He's our center. Um, it, was, it was definitely a, a trial and an error to get him to that point to have the confidence to be able to snap the ball. And, you know, and they, and they, they tried to pick on him a little bit, but this summer we've we got, we got some puzzle pieces that we were able to put together and give him some help extra protection. And, uh, I think he's a real great leader up front uh, and a guy that's never uh, played this game. I call him the Jeff Sackley of the offensive line. Where he's, he's been telling the guys who's blocking this and that and third, and I think that's real big. He's talking about the center, and the center that's never played the game, and it's on a varsity level for him. So I appreciate my guys each and every week. And going into this week, we have McCormick. We're going to take McCormick on the road. It's like, wow. Coach got to get you a home game then. But uh, we've been on the road lately, uh, so we're going to go to McCormick. The expectations are as follows. Uh, each play, uh, we're looking to get better. Each player, his mindset is to help each other every play and complete the assignment. I told the guys this week that uh, this, is, this is not a homework assignment this week uh, that you can turn in late. This is the exam that you, that you practice for, you're working on, and everything else. And now you got you got to turn it in, you got to complete the job. Um, so then the expectations is, is execution, effort, and excitement uh, is the root to how we're going to grade uh, for the benefits of this upcoming week. And I think that, you know, understanding, like everyone else has said, in your wins and your losses, is that about your finish. You, you, you don't quit on your team and things of that nature. I got a great group of kids. I got 23 kids that probably have never played on a varsity level. And they go out and see these seniors. And, I tell them, I say, hey, it doesn't matter. Big size, grades, all, all that just matters that you put on your backs and you go out and do the best you can. And that's all I ever ask for you to do. So that's all I'm saying. Coach Washington and to former charter school, um, we can't say enough how much we welcome you. We're so glad that you are back here with the touchdown club. We look forward to the spotlight and the Saints, and we really are. We're glad you're here. I'm again a part of the Lawrence County Touchdown Club. Coach <laughs> Doolittle got his very first victory Friday night for Lawrence Academy Crusaders. And I don't know a lot about Lawrence Academy, but I know a pretty good bit. And when you beat me, that means a lot to Crusader Nation. I'm happy to come Mountain. That means the county took out all of Newberry County down there, but you did your part and you are up now, Coach Jolly Dulo. Uh, thank you for having us. Uh, wonderful environment here. Thank you for all the support for this organization. Really, a uh, really neat opportunity for us as coaches and these guys. Uh, uh, one correction, I, I didn't play a single play in Friday night, so I can't take that. Can't take credit for a win, but I was, I was so proud of these guys. And I, I got to tell one story. Uh, everywhere I've ever been, the first victory, I always take the game ball. But I, as we recognize these guys, and they should get all the credit. Uh, I, I don't have one from Morris County because, um, because there's a guy at this table that means so much to our team. Coach Hurton is the embodiment and the definition of the servant leader. I mean, I, 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 uh, you can't help but see Jesus when this man uh, serves these guys and us as coaches. And, and uh, he's got it all in his house. There's so much to her. And uh, I'm coaching you. Know, I just want to take an opportunity for everybody. Just thank you. For what you do for me and these guys, I can follow myself. But to introduce our guys, uh, Saltmore and Anthony Bell. Nathan is uh, a tireless worker. We say that about most of all our guys. We've got 14 guys on the roster, so when you, when you uh, ingest, if you're going to have time to work in the concession stand, we did, you probably played over 115 plays. And so two weeks ago, Nathan did not come off the field. He played every offense and defense and special team snap, and he did it uh, with a little bit of so, uh, so sophomore, uh, really kind of quarterbacks are our defense in a lot of ways. This guy's in the right spot. And so he's got a lot of football in front of him, good player for us. Uh, you met Gary Murphy. He's a junior. Uh, and I'm in everywhere I said things that 
he does, uh, you know, and gets his name in the paper. He does all the other stuff so much better. So he's a great young man and a great football player. And uh, that, that's a very good combination. Again, he, yeah, he's, he's got a lot of numbers. He never went off the field. And, uh, a, a junior captain last year, he was a captain before I got here. Uh, so just more for young man. Buddy Baker, senior. Uh, we do have an international kid that came out to the team uh, after school started, but and as far as just a regular old four-year football guy, this is our only senior. And, uh, and he does everything that you would expect a senior to do. Uh, lead by example, through effort and attitude. Uh, knows what we want done and how we want You know, these are kind of our, all our number guys offensively. They're going to, if we're going to have somebody uh, catch it or run it, these are the guys. But here's the thing that you got to understand about all these guys. No pot, no rock. I mean, all of them are on the field. And they've got to block uh, for the other guys. And then they, they'll get the ball in their hands eventually. So uh, we move money all over the field. We've done a phenomenal job running the football field. Catching for all fours, he's um, been on the job defensively and all that kind of stuff too. But beyond the number, everybody likes to talk about number. It's, it's more than that. It's just, it's just uh, attitude and effort and all those things. Last one, we got Jared, uh, Jared Brook. He's kind of a uh, Swiss Army knife, uh, just like all these other guys, kind of playing a lot of different spots offensively. Uh, big, strong kid, uh, producer for us on the offense, they can get side of the ball. And again, just like all these guys, they work really hard. And, you, know, we're at, you know, we're at a small school, none of that really matters. Uh, uh, because uh, the lessons you learn at, at Dole or LA or Lawrence or Clinton are, are just about the same. Your effort is going to take you far in life. How you execute, a lot of times determines your outcome. You got to learn how to get back up and get back down. You got to, you got to understand that it, tough times don't last like people do. All those things, uh, you got to learn how to work together. You got to uh, learn how to uh, love people and sometimes only deserve it and serve each other. And so, uh, so grateful. I'm blessed to have the opportunity that I have at, at LA and thankful for these guys. And then the last guy at the table, Coach Plow, does a wonderful job leading all of us in our AD. And coaches, probably over the course of 16 years, the Lawrence coach every score out here. So uh, thankful to have him and thankful for these guys. Thankful for this opportunity. I just want to say that the Red Devils host Aiken tomorrow night at Bob State. It'll be homecoming. Lawrence travels to Chapman up the end to take on the Panthers. Uh, the formal charter by Coach Washington is on the road at McCormick. And the Lawrence Academy Crusaders, there's nothing, and I mean nothing, like going down that road, nestled that top curb field, back in between the trees, and when Jesse Tarr gets ready, it's as passionate as any high school you've ever seen. My man, Jesse, you are blessed. You guys are blessed to have a man that loves you, that gets up there, sacrifices, does what he does. That's my shout out. Jesse Parker is my guy. I got a day to go to Steve Engelhardt. I'm going to ask him for him at Bailey Stadium at 1 o'clock. But to give him an introduction, it needs to be a member of Blue Bows Nation. And outside of those Bob Strong, I know of no one, no one that bleeds blue bones blue like Coach Harold Davis. I know no one that loves Presbyterian College and everything that it stands for. He quarterback him, he assistant coach him, he head coach him. This man loves playing in South Carolina. We're blessed that he's still in playing in South Carolina. So interviews Coach Steve Inmar. Please welcome Coach Harold Davis. Thank you, buddy. You can tell my wife all those good things. 
Nichols um, as our new athletic director. A great opportunity uh, for the Blue Hose Nation to continue to take strides and, and she's going to lead us in an uh, unbelievable direction. Just really excited about that and nobody is, is, uh, is busier right now than Dr. Anita Gustafson, uh, our new president. And the fact that she's here at this uh, Lawrence, County, uh, Lawrence County Touchdown uh, Club really says a lot so thank you so much uh, for being here and I'm really excited uh, to be here as well you know last year my first year here um, I, you know I think this this thing that y'all do every every other week is absolutely amazing and nothing gets me fired up more than seeing uh, a bunch of players in their in their jerseys and um, and we've got some good looking players here too I don't know if we can get you guys graduated in the next week or so and, and get you eligible <laughs> and get you over uh, on campus but we got some good looking players and um, you know I just want to tell you guys you know enjoy this enjoy this you know in today's in today's age there, there's so much looking ahead you're always looking ahead always looking at social media looking at what else you know what else is there what else is there for you you know guys enjoy it enjoy it these are the best times of your life I promise you the best times of your life all right you'll always think back and remember those high school Friday nights under the lights all right, a lot of blood, blood, sweat, and tears with these guys right next to you that you love. And there's nobody that's going to make a bigger difference in your life than your high school football coaches. So enjoy it. Don't, don't take it for granted. Don't take it for granted. Uh, you know, we had our first game last week uh, against Murray State, a full scholarship program. I thought we went up there and played, played really hard, showed that we've, we've gotten better, nowhere near uh, where I want us to be. Um, you know, we competed with them for a half and, you know, everybody says, well, man, you look so much better. You know, it, you know, competed with them for a half, probably should have been 10 to 10 at halftime and they got one late on us. You know, we're not happy. You know, we're not happy. We're, we're out there working hard and our guys are, are working extremely, extremely hard. And, you know, every week is an opportunity. All right, I heard several coaches say it. Every week is an opportunity. And that's what I want to talk to you about now is opportunities. Opportunities come and go. Doors open and close. Sometimes you gotta go through the door, sometimes you sprint through the door, and sometimes you gotta knock the dang door down. All right, and I was in a situation, looking back where I was at, I graduated college and knew I always wanted to be a, a, a coach, but I wanted to be a high school coach. I had, I had no intentions of ever being a college football coach. That just wasn't something that I ever thought I was gonna do. 
So I went to high school, I taught in high school for two years, and I was coaching uh, high school, and the, uh, the head coach at Indiana State calls me up one spring day, I was also coaching track at the, uh, at the high school as well, and, and calls me up and says, hey, I've got a running back job open, would you be interested in coming and coaching running backs this spring? And if you do a good job, you know, obviously you stay for the fall. And uh, so I went and did it for the spring, just on a volunteer basis. So I was driving from Charleston, Illinois, to Terre Haute, Indiana, about an hour away. Every day after school, I would drive an hour and go to practice, all right? And then I would stay till midnight, one o'clock in the morning, looking at practice, preparing for the next day because I had to teach in Charleston, Illinois, and then drive back. So at the end of that spring, he said, hey, you did a great job. I'd like to hire you as a full-time running back coach. But here's the kicker, all right? The position pays $8,000 total. That's it, nothing else, all right? So, um, but I saw an opportunity. I saw an opportunity, all right? And I didn't just take it, man. I, 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 ran, I ran through the door. I ran through the door after. Went and told our, our, uh, uh, the principal at Charleston High School, said, sorry, I'm not coming back next year. I'm gonna take this job making $8,000. Now, luckily my wife is an RN. We had a little one, my oldest was one at the time. And um, so she was able to, to help support, you know, some. But, uh, but I took that job and within, you know, a couple months, all right, we get to the summer and within a couple months, um, I get a call from uh, Rose Holman Institute of Technology. Their offensive coordinator left and um, they needed a, a quarterback coach. And I, I had known the, the offensive line coach, he suggested um, to the head coach. So I end up taking that position. But if I would have never taken any in the state position, making $8,000 in that opportunity wouldn't have happened. And then so, I, so I'm, at, I'm at Rose Hall and I'm coaching quarterbacks, the head coach that's there uh, at the end of the season, the last game right on the field with the whole team and the coaches didn't tell another coaches prior to or anything resigns right there on the field, last game. So I'm sitting there going, what the heck am I gonna do with my life? All right, I just quit a high school job, I went to coach college, I know nobody in the game, and this head coach just quit. So where am I gonna go? What, what my thought was, my, my, my wife's parents own a, uh, a, a record service and salvage yard, so I'm thinking, okay, I'm probably gonna drive a record. You know, I have no idea, no idea. But, all right, I, I'm hanging in there. They end up hiring a new coach. New coach is named Ted Karras. All right, some of the old guys might remember uh, Ted Karras uh, or, or Alex Karras. Alex Karras played defensive line for the Detroit Lions. George Papadopoulos, he also was on, uh, on uh, Webster, if you remember the show Webster. All right, so they hire Ted Karras. Ted Karras says, I'm gonna interview you when he comes in. I've never met the guy before in my life. He says he's gonna interview me. All right, so I go in for the interview. It wasn't an interview. All he was doing was pumping me for information. So now I'm really thinking there's no way this guy's gonna keep me. We only had, I think, four full-time spots at the time anyway. No way this guy's gonna keep me. So I go into my office and I'm sitting there, you know, contemplating what am I gonna do? You know, what am I gonna do? And I know everybody's felt like that at some point. Sometimes, you know, even as a 16 to 18 year old, sometimes you feel like that. What are you gonna do? All right, so I'm sitting there and this, this assistant comes in and he gives me a, a list of names, all right, and a Ziploc bag full of cash. He was the recruiting coordinator, but he just took another job. So someone offered him a job and he said, bye bye, I'm out of here. He went and just dished it on my desk. All right, another coach took another job, he's out of there. So we have a recruiting night coming up. Now this head coach just got hired on Wednesday, he met with me on Thursday, and we're supposed to have a recruiting night on Friday. The head coach didn't want anything to do with this first recruiting day. He had just got he had just gotten hired. So he came in, he said, hey, you guys run the recruiting, I just want to see what you do. Well, everybody's gone, everybody's taking another job, so it's me, I'm stuck here, I have no idea, never coached college football, I got a Ziploc bag full of cash, all right? It ain't gonna get me very far though, all right? So. And so how am I gonna do this recruiting visit? I've never even been a part of a recruiting visit yet because I never coached college football. All right, so what I did was I sat there and I contemplated, contemplated, I said, why am I gonna 
why am I going to stress so much over a guy who's probably not even going to keep me? I don't know this guy from Adam. Probably not even going to keep me. All right? And then something clicked in me. I said, you know what? It's an opportunity. It's a door that I got to bust down. The opportunity is not necessarily presenting itself right away. It's probably a little gray, but I got to knock this door down. I got to do as I got to work as hard as I can um, in this situation. If he doesn't keep me, he doesn't keep me. But it's not going to be because I didn't do my job. So I, I went to the uh, I went to the uh, dean of students. I went to admissions. I went to financial aid. Organized this big um, you know this big recruiting event. We had the recruiting event that Friday night. Um, his son was a sixth grader at the time, and I had my, my little son there who's like three, but my, his son was a sixth grader. Currently, he is the starting center for the Cincinnati Bengals, Ted Karras. All right, so he was a sixth grader there at the time. And uh, so I go through this recruiting thing. I'm also a track coach then, by the way. Back in the day in college, you, you coached multiple things. So I was also a track coach. So that Saturday, we had a track meet. I come back. Um, to campus, nobody else is there. I'm doing some extra work in the in the office. I'm walking down the steps to leave, and I never will forget this vision that I had. And it was I'm walking down the steps to go out to the parking lot to my truck, and my truck is the only vehicle in the parking lot, the only one in the parking lot. And then I see this SUV pulling down the hill that rose home, and it's Ted Karras. So he pulls up, rolls down his window, and says, you got time to take a drive? I said, sure. So I get in the car, and I'm for sure thinking, he's firing me, right? I've got no shot. But I get, in the, I get in the car, and he says, you know, I see a lot out of you by what you did last night. By what you did last night, you didn't have to do that like you did. But it was 100, it was professional, it was exactly what I want. And I don't know if I can keep you because I've offered other this position to other people but if I can I'm going to talk to the athletic director and see if we can keep you as a kind of a lay coach all right with track and then also help with football so that's great I'll take whatever I can get right well two or three days later he comes to my office he said hey the guy I offered the job to didn't take the job it's yours so that I mean that just clicked with me right then that I knew that I had to do everything I ever could do to try to stay in this business. So I become his, I become his recruiting coordinator, quarterback coach. Within about three weeks of just meeting with him on offense and different things, he makes me his offensive coordinator within about three weeks. So now I'm his offense coordinator, recruiting uh, coordinator, uh, quarterback coach, and I'm still coaching track. And so we have these, these uh, department meetings. All right, we have these department meetings. And the athletic director would always have something that he would kind of volunteer out for people to do. And every single thing that the athletic director ever asked if somebody was willing to do it in the department meeting, I raised my hand. I said, I'll do it. If you want to run the golf tournament, I'll do it. We need it. We, our strength coach left. Can anybody run the strength program for all the other sports while we get someone else? I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. And that's a lesson to all the players here as well. Man, if there's a job, just do it. The worst thing that I tell my staff, the, the, the number one thing I don't want to hear on my staff is it's not my job. It's not my job. If it's not your job, there's, then you don't have a job. You don't have a job. So whether, it's, whether you're the starting running back, starting quarterback, it, you know, starting linebacker, it doesn't matter. If you need someone to run down on a kickoff, it's, raise your hand, I'll do it. If you need somebody uh, to, to be on PAT field goal, I'll do it. I'll do it. Do everything you can. Do everything you can. Make yourself the most employable person all right, on your team. Make yourself the most employable person on your team. So this all happens, all right? I'm with, I'm with them for three years as an assistant. He leaves to take a job at Marion University in Indianapolis to start that program from scratch there. Wants to bring me along with him. I said, you know what, I'm not into starting a program from scratch. That just seems like that's not a good idea at all. So I'm not going to do that. But I went right into the athletic director. I was 27 years old. Went right into the athletic director and I said, I want the head coaching job here. 
And because I raised my hand every single time he wanted something done, I got the head coaching position there. And they hadn't had a winning season in 13 years, and we went on to have four straight winning seasons. All right, and then I, and then I hit another crossroads. All right, two weeks before my fifth season starts, Indiana State offensive coordinator Troy Walters leaves to go to Texas A&M. And the head coach of Indiana State calls me to come and be the offense coordinator at my alma mater. The hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. Didn't want to do it. Didn't want to do it, but knew I had to do it. Knew I had to do it. So I left that position two weeks before season started, but everybody else elevated. All of my staff that was there at Rose Holman all was able to elevate. Someone was able to be uh, an interim head coach for the year. You know, positions elevated. They got more money. So it worked out great for them. And then they ended up having a winning season as well. All right. But uh, so I, I went, took the position at Indiana State. Now, anybody in their right mind would say, why the heck would you take that position? They had just come off of two of the longest losing streaks in the country. They had lost 33 in a row. I mean, yeah, lost 33 in a row, won one game, and then lost 32 in a row. They were 55 and one. I mean, one in 55. I can't even wrap my mind around. One in 55. All right, and I take that position as offense coordinator, and we, we ended up having a great a great team. We had gotten some transfers. We had we had some really a lot better players than what they had. So it, it definitely wasn't because of me. And we had a lot of offense. And we had uh, some great offensive coaches that are that are uh, you know at some really good places right now. But uh, so, but we ended up having a winning season, first winning season in like 16 years, something like that. All right, I was there for one one year, but I, I I wasn't sure about that opportunity. But I said, you know what, I got to I got to go, I got to knock it, knock the door down. And then the next the next season, I, I get an opportunity to how ironically start a program from scratch, the one, uh, uh, something that I thought that was a really really bad idea, and we, I was able to start that program from scratch down in down in Florida at Florida Tech and uh, we had seven seasons went to the division two playoffs a couple times uh, had some really really good teams and 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 a lot of people would say why the heck would you start a program from scratch you know what I don't know man it's an opportunity it's an opportunity and sometimes you just gotta you gotta take those opportunities even if it scares you a little all right so um, uh, same thing with this program, all right? Taking over this program. I had, uh, COVID had happened. Florida Tech shut down the football program. I was sitting for two years and got this opportunity. Remembered when, I, when, I, when we came up here in 2016, loved the campus, loved the area, loved the people. And, and we still, I mean, we treat our, our guests so great, you know, when they come. Uh, and I just remember the people. I remember how we were treated. And I thought that's a, that's a place that I'd love to be. That's a place I'd love to be. And I'm really happy that we're here now. Um, last thing I'm, I'm going to talk about just real quickly is, um, is kind of a few things I talked to our team about. And uh, hopefully, you know, you can take something from it. I think, I think football, you know, we're, we're the lucky ones that we get to do this and get to be a part of this, this great game. I don't think there's another game that teaches life lessons like football does. Um, we go through a lot of hard stuff, right? There's not another sport that has to practice so much over the course of the year to have those 10, 11 opportunities that you get. And so enjoy every single, every single practice opportunity you get because you don't get many of the game opportunities. But we talk about, we have a, we have a mantra, pull the rope. All right, and what pull the rope means, all right, what pull the rope means is if you can envision and imagine a tug of war and, and you're on one side of the rope and on the other side of the rope, all right, is a bunch of stuff that pulls you away from your goals. Your goals are on this side and all the stuff, all right, that happens in your life. Sometimes it's your own, by your own doing. Sometimes it's things that you can't control. Sometimes it's, it's other people. Sometimes it's the haters. You guys know what I'm talking about? The haters on the other side that are trying to keep you from getting to your goals. And every single day, every single day, you got to get up and you got to pull the rope. You got to pull the rope. And you got to pull against all that crap on the other side of the rope to get to where you want to be. And you do that with three things. Effort, discipline, and perseverance. 
All right, first thing ever, how you do something is how you do everything. You can't just turn on the switch off and on. You gotta have great effort in every single thing you do. Your relationships, you know, we talk about obviously practice in the weight room and, and the classroom and socially, community service. You gotta give great effort in all of it because it becomes a habit. It becomes a habit in everything you do. And then discipline, doing the things that you know that you don't really wanna do, but you know you have to do. The things that you don't really want to do, but you know you have to do. And you have to train yourself for that. You have to train yourself for the discipline. And then perseverance, bad things are going to happen. Bad things are going to happen. You've got to be tough enough, mentally tough enough, physically tough enough to withstand that and keep moving forward. And then the, the last thing um, we talked to our team all about, and this isn't just me talking. This is, this is studies done on very successful corporations, organizations, businesses, there's, there's three things that make an organization successful. And, and this isn't me, this is, this is studies, and there's a lot of derivatives of these words. All right, but the first thing is trust. And how do you trust? How you trust, you show up every day. You show up every day, and you put in work every day, and you build trust amongst a team like that. All right, and then you respect. You know your role. At, to build respect on the team, everybody has a role. Do your role the best that you can and you're going to gain respect within the team because you do your role great. And then the last thing is love. Love. And how do you love? You invest in the people around you. Invest in your teammates instead of investing in yourself. If you invest in your teammates, all right, it creates love. All right, and we want warrior athletes. All right, warrior athletes. And you all should be warrior athletes. And what does warrior athlete mean? It means the willingness to engage your opponent regardless of the chance of victory or the score. The willingness to engage your opponent regardless of the score or chance of victory. Either way you want to look at it. All right, so that's just a little bit about, you know, kind of what I uh, talked to our team about. And I appreciate, once again, Buddy, for uh, putting all this stuff on. This is awesome. Um, thank you all. I hope to see you this Saturday at 1 o'clock out at Bailey Memorial Stadium. This is uh, our first game, and we don't have another home game for about a month. So uh, hopefully we can see you all out there uh, this weekend. Love you all. Appreciate it. Give one more big hand to the city of Clinton and the city of Lawrence for being our game day sponsor for the day. Game day is September 21st, two weeks from today. We'll be meeting again right here. The speaker will be Coach Todd Knight at Newberry College. Our game day sponsor that day will be First Baptist Church of Lawrence and First Presbyterian Church of Lawrence.